Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this presentation about the magic wand called ONAP. I'm Catherine Lefay from AT&T. This is Kandan Kadrwell from AT&T. So the Open Network Automation Platform is an autumn project that has been released under the Linux Foundation since uh, March, uh, since April 5th. Uh, it was open for the early adopter during the Mobile World Congress. This ONAP is in fact the harmonization of two framework for real-time policy driven for software automation of VNF that enables developer, uh, network providers, cloud providers uh, to create easily and faster new services. So it's a combination of the Ecom platform and the OpenO. The Ecom platform was developed by AT&T over the last three years. It's in production. It provides a comprehensive suite of application focusing on design orchestration, policy control and analytics capabilities. It's a mobile-based design that enables self-service capabilities to enable instantiation and closed-loop automation. The OpenO is another open source project which was released last year under the Linux Foundation umbrella, bringing open Tosca model, advanced open process tool change, and also it facilitates the onboarding of the VNF through SDK. As you can see, the members are mainly cloud providers, carriers, and integrators, but more to come. If you look at the service provider stack, ONAP is playing at the orchestration management policy services and control plane software layers. It's composed currently of eight plus three projects. The eight first projects are representing the different applications that we are currently developing and announcing, while the three last project is more about the VNF SDK, the documentation, the modelings, and the virtual function controller. Let's have a look at this famous eight component. So you can have an access to the ONAP platform through the ONAP portal, and you will have some design function. The service design creation application provide you a visual and modeling design tools where you have four levels of assets. You have the resources, and by resource, you have three types of, of category. You have the infrastructure resource, like for example, the cloud or the storage. Then you have also uh, the network. This is where you will have the VNF as a resource. And finally, the third resource is the application, where you have function like load balancing. The second level of asset is the services, which is in fact a combination of different services, uh, different resources together. Then we have the third level of asset, which is the product. Um, it's different services binding together, providing a commercial distribution with ordering and billing. And the last one um, in terms of uh, asset is the offer. It's a bundle of product uh, with some marketing uh, uh, dimension. Then we have the policy creation framework. This is where we are maintaining, distributing, and operating a set of rules and policy that underlie the ONAP component uh, from control, orchestration, and management function. Another design function is offered through the analytics application design framework. And this one is connected directly with the DCAE platform, standing for data collection, analytics, and even. This is the place where we are gathering information from the ONAP component, but also from the different VNF that we have onboarded on the platform. As information, we can have performance, usage, configuration data, and you can therefore create some uh, analytics uh, through the ONAP portal. DCA is also important because it's the first element of the closed loop system. So we have some virtual event streaming from the different component, and we have different collector, which will try to identify based on different policies and rules if we have reached any type of threshold, as an example. 
And if it is the case, then some action will be automatically be done, like spin up a VM if we need, uh, if we have lack of uh, a capacity on the load balancer, or change the configuration of a VNF itself. Let's move to the upper component, the active and available inventory. So it gives you a real-time view of the resource and the services that you have created through the service design creation, but also any kind of services and resources which are running on the ONAD platform. It demonstrates the relationship between these different components in the network infrastructure, having a network topology, its perform actively some audit to be sure that the view is constantly accurate. So you have different streaming source to have a logical and physical view of your resource and your services. If you look at the um, service orchestrator, this is somehow the heart of the platform. This is where we arrange, we sequence, we implement the different tasks based on the rules and the policies um, to, to create, to consolidate, uh, to, to remove any logical or physical resource. The controllers, we have two types of controllers which are based on the Open Daylight Framework. We have the network controllers. This is where we will, this is the controller that will in, instantiate a new VNF as an example. And they will report the new status of the new VNF through um, their channel to the ANAI, again, to have this accurate view. And finally, we have the application controller, which are more related to the life cycle of the VNF. Um, for example, we start, we stop the VNF, but we have also monitor and repairing function. Based on the ill check result, there will be an action on the VMF. So when we look at the business value that the ONA platform can bring, I think, and the combination of the two uh, framework, OpenO and Ecom, it will bring a lot of good value for the business, especially uh, with the emerging technology coming from the 5G, where we can offer residential and enterprise, even cloud uh, solution based on that, with the automation of the network and the acceleration of the service creation as well. The fact that we are combining um, all the technology together and also defining some VNF guidelines based on NetConf, the e-templates, Young model, Tosca model, uh, you have a kind of uniformization of the requirement, helping the VNF vendors, the integrators, to test their solution, to certify the solution through uh, this uh, ONA platform. And also, you can see it as a proof of concept environment if you want to try new things related to software-defined networks. So now I will give the floor to my colleague who will uh, speak about the AIC. So we want to give you guys the context of where we use one app. And uh, Catherine talked about uh, what is the use of the own app, and she also going to show a demo how we actually own app can be int integrated and uh, used along with OpenStack. So to give a context about uh, AT&T integrated cloud, this has been deployed in 80 plus location, and this is growing both in the size and also the number of location. Uh, we host the carrier grade workloads. So what do we mean by carrier grade workloads? So the network function virtualization, which is actually hosting all the telco application, it's uh, for the AT&T, is hosted on the AT&T integrated cloud. And it is a complex deployment. When we say complex deployment, there is a lot of uh, VNF being hosted. And uh, WANA provides the way to actually orchestrate on multiple location. This is very key, because you know when we talk about in a small instance of OpenStack within a data center or within a lab, it is a very simple configuration. But when we talk about the scale, in a large scale like 80 plus location, and with the event of you know, like all the discussion going with respect to the edge, uh, we're planning to extend this to a large number of location. So in that context, you know, like it does require, OpenStack does require something you know, like above the layer. So that's where you know, like one app is integrated with AT&T Cloud. It provides that you know, like the complex configuration needed by the VNF in a multi-layer, multi meaning that one is deploying it, then configuring the VNF with all the configuration needed for the VNF. So those, con those concepts is actually, you know, like with the power of OpenStack and the, the own app is being integrated in the AT&T integrated cloud. 
So this is from starting from a small size, you know, the medium and edge. Uh, it could be a very small size, you know, it could be a couple of compute uh, or it could be a 500 plus compute in a data center. And this provides this, you know, complex installation but managing all the VNF, right? So it's really a multi-tenant VNF, even though we talk about just AT&T, and this applies to all the telco providers. And the, even within a company, even within a single application, multi-tenancy is needed. Why multi-tenancy is needed? Because people, uh, there's going to be an operational limitation, meaning that there may be a separate operation managing the workloads, and there may be a separate application team managing it. So even within a company, you need a multi-tenancy to make sure that you know, like only people need access to that VNF and VM, they have an access to it. So, so this provides you know, like the context around you know, like how a large scale can be deployed along with the own app. We're going to see the more detail in the demo and also in this uh, additional slide. This also need to be very highly available. Why you need to be highly available? The critical application, you know, like whatever you guys are using from a cell phone, from AT&T, or any other telco providers, you know, the, the application which is hosted in the telco has to be highly available because it need to support, you know, like critical applications like 911 calls. So it, it, it does need to have, be high, you know, like it does need to have a high availability, not on a single layer, starting from the hardware, the software, and the Uber layer like one app. So the overall structure of that, you know, like components has to be highly available. So this slide is to talk about uh, how does this OpenStack integrate with the one app? Where is this relationship coming, coming, coming across? So OpenStack is deployed in each location. So we know that OpenStack does not provide a federation across multiple locations today. And in this case, you know, like when we deploy in like 100 plus location, so the federation is really needed. Why do we need a federation? For example, if a site fails and then we need to move the workload or we need to have a way to enable the workload in another location because we do need a higher availability. So when our location goes down or, you know, anything to do with the VNF itself, even if a single rack goes down or a single server goes down, they need to be a way to actually you know, transform the application and make, make it work from another location or another server or another rack. So this need actually a way to have a policy-based orchestration or policy-based enablement. So this is where the one app comes in the top layer. It provides that five key functionality, what uh, Catherine was talked about. So the design, so you have a design studio where you go in and you say that, okay, I need this particular VNF and it connects to this load balancer and this connects to this firewall. I want to service chain them across it. Then also I want to say that, okay, I want to deploy this in this specific rack and this specific server in this particular data center. Then it goes and check that particular data center has enough capacity to deploy that particular compute. And also, you know, like I can define as a, as a application owner, I can say that, you know, like, okay, I need another region this need to be deployed with. So it can actually detect whether I have a, a capacity in another region, wherever the region what I'm asking for, then it can also can put the workload in there. So the way it does is that, you know, like once the design is done, then it takes on to the orchestration layer then you know, it looks at the policy, and then it compiles the heat template, which is actually the heat is the engine in the OpenStack that takes that particular heat template, and then you know, like it goes and creates that workload. The way it does is like, it, it, that's why we call it as a magic. It, it does actually send to multiple location by taking the concept of the design, what the application owner really needs it, then it applies a policy to, because there is a lot of corporate policy involved with it, right? So the application team who want to deploy it, they, they have to obey with all the policies. For example, you know, if you take a company, you know, any, this applies to any enterprise or any companies that there may be a security policy this particular VNF cannot be deployed in a European Union, you know, country. Or, you know, it could be that, you know, like the workload cannot be transferred to US. So there are a lot of like laws involved, especially when we try to deploy in the most of the world, along with, you know, like a, uh, along with the US and other countries. So those are the policies need to be taken care. And there are different teams and different, you know, like uh, uh, people in the company actually define that policy. And those policies are also being considered when the heat template has been created. Then it's sent to the AIC and the, it's sent to the OpenStack. Then it creates that workload, what is needed to make this whole application work. So one of the aspects that there is a lot of discussion about, you know, bringing the other open source community 
uh, incorporated and having a relationship between OpenStack community. Why do we need that? Is really that you know, like a more collaboration among the open source community does provide that you know the interoperability between the application because this is very very critical. You know, people talked about Kubernetes, people talk about Docker. There are so many open source community. So one app is another open source community. What it does provides is that you know, like especially telco company, but it also applies to the other enterprises because this is not just a telco application. So anyone who need way to orchestrate a large scale deployment and or even a small scale deployment but want to use that five thing you know like what we talked about they can use this particular one app along with the open stack and this is a open source purely open source and there is a huge community behind it so we like to have the open stack community and the one app community talking together and we like to create an integration project. This is basically to demonstrate that, you know, like OneApp and OpenStack can work together. We have demonstrated in our environment. And OneApp community is, you know, Catherine is going to show a demo. But we also like to have, like, a large community of people who are participating in the OpenStack to collaborate on the OneApp and make use of that, you know, the, uh, the good work currently going on in the own apps. So this is what, you know, like mostly the discussion wise, we are working with many people uh, within our OpenStack community to get that going in terms of making this to, communi uh, to community uh, coming together and make this solution, you know, work for everyone. Thank you, Kenda. So what do you need to run own app um, and all the demo? So first of all, you need to join our community, then you will have an access to our Gerrit source code repository, where you will find our hit templates, the YAML files and also the environment files. Uh, for the demonstration, uh, so far we have certified it on Rackspace, but I know other uh, developer communities trying other cloud infrastructure. You get your account on Rackspace, you set up your credential, and then you start the hit stack on Rackspace. More or less, it takes 20 minutes to deploy all the components except the DCAE, which is the one related to data uh, collection, even in alarms. And it takes more time due to the storage. And then you can enjoy own app. So let's have a look together. Imagine that you have your hit templates and you have also your account on Hackspace. So what you need to do is really create your open stack called own app stack. And you will see that uh, all the VMs, so here is where we, we create the own app stack, and then um, all the VM will be instantiated automatically. Uh, we have about, I think, 33 Docker containers, and uh, it, it needs 14 uh, VMs to deploy the complete uh, platform. And different states will appear. You start with uh, ready to deploy, it, then, which is gray color. Then you move to configuring, which is orange color. And finally, when it's complete on this VM, it moves to green. So that's very easy. Two files, you create your, you kick off your, your stack, and then you have your own app uh, ready to go. Just waiting. Yeah, it's coming green. Here we go. When your own app platform is deployed, it's not only the source code that we have delivered, it's not only the e template to spin up your own app platform, we are also delivering two use cases just to demonstrate the capability of the platform. The first use case is the VFAR wall. And how does it work? You will have a traffic generator who will send some package on the VFAR walls. Here you will see there is a VEST client. Uh, the VEST client is virtual event streaming, which will exchange information with our DCA platform, or alarm event analytics platform. Different collector will be put in place, and uh, the collector will compare the data with the policy rules which have been created in the policy engine. At one point, we will detect that the threshold has been reached, and therefore, we will send an instruction to the application control to say, hey, hold on, we are getting too much traffic. We need to reduce the traffic on the traffic generator. That's the first demo. So again, quick video about that. So we have our traffic generation sending packets to our firewalls. We have our VES here, element who are sending information to the OMAP platform 
uh, we are aggregating all the information under one collector, which is comparing with the policy holes. At one point, we will have uh, a message telling us that we have reached the threshold and the application controller will send a notification to the traffic generator to reduce the traffic. And you will see the traffic will be slowed down, back to the normal, as you can see on this graph. The opposite can happen, uh, the traffic has slowed down that much that the VFAR wall could handle additional traffic. Again, our VEST client is sending the information to the ONAP platform and the ONAP platform is sending messages through the application controller telling the traffic generator, you can have more traffic on it. And we are back to the normal. The second um, demo is also very interesting because in, instead of changing the configuration of one VNF or traffic generator, um, here what we try to illustrate, again we send traffic on the load balancer and at one point the collector who are comparing the rules and the policy from the policy engine will notice that for the VDNF which is set up here, it's really too much traffic. So when the threshold is reached, um, we will collect the VNF information, the VDNF information from the ANAI, remember, this is the active available inventory, and the MSO, the service orchestrator, will initiate, will spin up a new VN with a new VNF in order to load balance the traffic across the two VNF. So quick demo about that. So Traffic generator is sending a lot of information to the V-load balancer. Uh, the uh, collector is aggregating the data, checking with the policy rules which are in place. In a few minutes, I think we will reach the threshold. Yep, we reach the threshold. Therefore, we will look at ANEI to have all the information related to the VD VDNF services that was created through the service uh, design creation application. And MSO, the service orchestrator, will automatically scale up. You can have the same behavior to scale down, of course. So that's, that's the two demo use case that you can practice uh, with the ONAP uh, platform. I think we have still a couple of time because what I would like to do with you, um, so everything is really real, it's not only demoware, um, I'm already in the ONAP portal and I would like to share with you that we have lost uh, the connection with the screen, <laughs> so I'm not sure. Um, to switch on. Switch I need to switch on, so let's see. Is it back? No, I yeah, it, it is back. It is yeah. back. So I'm currently inside the ONAP portal. Remember, this is where we have the different design function, the service design creation tools, the policy creation framework, and the opportunity to create some analytics. So I was discussing with you about some policy, checking the threshold based on the collector that are aggregating value at the DCA level. Here are, in fact, the, the different uh, rules that has been created in the context of this demo. We have the B, BRMS rule, which is used to uh, the runtime policy. So you have a description, some information about that. You can see that here, I, I maybe didn't say, but we have two um, rule engine. One is XML uh, for stateless transaction. The other one is based on rules for stateful transaction. In the context of this particular policy, uh, it's a rules, rules, and it's about the VFA rules. So we have a set of information uh, that we need and parameters in order to run uh, runtime this policy. If you go to the edit, it's possible also to view the policy. Oops, sorry, that's what not happened before. <laughs> But that's the purpose of the demo. So you can change the different variables, uh, but you, ha you have also an access to the uh, code. And I think I've maybe lost the connection in the meanwhile. Anyway, uh, the rules is also, you, you have access to the source code of the rules uh, where you can change uh, some additional information as well. So let's try to see if I can go 
and same. This is the two rules, the VFAR rule, the load balancer uh, that we have implemented for the demo. Let me change my profiles to see if the connectivity is better and reconnect to avoid this type of issue. I hope so. <laughs> So I'm connecting again to the ONA portal. And now I'm going to this famous SDC, the Service Design and Creation uh, application, where you can have a different type of resource. You can have a VNF, where you will have different category of VNFs. It's all the application level fours. It's also information about the DCA, this important platform for collecting uh, uh, the event and, and the alarms. Uh, you can have different network, network connectivities and you can also cover level 2 and level 3. You can also have some services. Uh, currently, it's limited uh, to this application, but we can announce uh, the uh, catalog. And then we have a kind of catalog after you have created all these uh, resources, these services, you can filter based on the resource, all the VF is virtual function, uh, all the VSC, uh, it's the virtual function component, like a load balancer. Uh, we have control point, we have virtual link, um, and the V uh, DNS and V load balancer are in fact two services that we have defined here. You can see there are different status when you create the environment. Um, of course, you can have uh, some resource, some services, product, which are still under design, so it means they are not yet deployed on, on the platform itself. Ready for testing, there are some certification that we can have when we create this environment. And when it is moved to the distribute, the distribute status, it means it's really active, like we have seen in the demo. If we have still a few minutes, I was discussing with you about the heat templates after you have registered to the ONAP community. Uh, we have not only the source code, but we are also offering a continuous integration tool change like Jenkins jobs uh, to generate automatically our build, uh, but also uh, generate artifacts uh, which are posted on Nexus. And then we have another Nexus, which have all the Docker container as well. We have Sonar as part of the tool change uh, to uh, monitor the, the quality of our source code and to have an idea about the test coverage. So where you can find the e-template to set up your own app platform, you just go to Gerrit, right? Gerrit.onapp.org, and you can imagine it Jenkins.onapp, Sonar.onapp. You go to the list of projects, and then you scroll down until you find a project called Demo, right, which is right here. Then you click on Git Web. You scroll down, there is an e directory under the tree. Um, you go to OpenEcom, this is where you will have your two files, the YAXML files and the environment files, which will help you to create your stack, okay? And then move up, uh, if you're interested, these are the two uh, it templates uh, related to the two demo, the VFA rules and the VLOAD balancer for the VDNS. I don't know if I can show more, otherwise. Yeah, you can uh, show more. You can yeah, more so. Um, so I want to go to the wiki for a few minutes because I was telling you, we start with the basis of the Ecom platform, which has been open source. But there are a lot of activities, especially last week, we had a major event at the uh, ONAP convention organized in Middletown. And I really invite you, you don't need to register, it's open publicly. I really invite you to go to the presentation because if you're interested, how we will move uh, and merging Ecom, open source, and open O. Uh, I really invite you to look at the architecture uh, evolution slide. You will see the different phase. You will see how the two platforms are converging to be one platform called ONA. Uh, we, we are trying to answer all the questions uh, that you might post, in particular on the wiki, but we have also some distribution lists. So if I go back here, if you have any question, um, you can always subscribe to any mailing list which are available again through the wiki. 
we, in particular, the mailing list, which is ONAP uh, Discuss, and has an ID. If I go quickly there, a uh, lot of discussion ongoing because we have certified using Hackspace, which is a ice uh, house flavor, but we are certifying also on Valina internally. Um, and a lot of questions about OpenStack uh, because people are trying to validate on, on Kylo, Okata. Um, so you just need to subscribe, you pose your question, and you will see it's not only uh, the original foundator of the community, but a lot of people are really uh, discussing and, and trying to uh, uh, ensure that we are moving fast on the ONAP community. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Uh, we can take a few questions. I also like to mention that ONAP is not just about the private cloud. It can also support public cloud, like Rackspace or AWS. Uh, the demo what uh, Catherine showed, it's actually hosted in the Rackspace. Uh, and also, as I stated you know, before, it is not just for the telco. It can be used by anyone else because it's an open source. And uh, you know, any enterprise or any 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 data center, you know, where the you know the cloud has been managed, it can be used to support you know like any type of workload. Go ahead. Hi, thank you for the presentation. My question will be from the VNF lifecycle management perspective, such as backup and restore uh, upgrades and migrations. Does ONAP still depending on each VNF vendor to handle these through their EMS, or ONAP totally will gonna skip the vendor EMS but perform these by itself? Thank you. Well, um, when, you will look, when we will have a chance, I would like to invite you to look at the wiki because we are currently uh, submitting different projects which will be reviewed uh, by the TSC board and finalized uh, by June 1st. And one of these projects is about all OAM aspects. And I expect that all these operational aspects will be covered, including the backup and restore. That, that's an initiative which is... Uh, uh, present it, and we hope it will be uh, approved by the TSC. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm Sachin from Nokia. So I had a question. Uh, you said that it can also do IT. So do you have uh, IT cloud management uh, support as well in one app? Uh, it, it is very generic, right? So end of the day, the VNF itself is a VN, right? Uh, you you hosted a web application an applica you know like a, a load balancer or a, you know any type of IT oriented application it doesn't matter for the, from the one app perspective you know as long as you define the application then you can definitely deploy through the one app and OpenStack or even with other clouds yeah let me qualify the question just real quick right so do you do chargeback multi cloud management uh, public private through the single pane of glass uh, such as let's say manage IQ does today. It's another open source. Yeah, so chargeback, I think, Catherine, I'm not sure whether chargeback is supported in the one app as of today. Uh, no, it's not yet supported uh, as is, but again, you are welcome uh, to submit any type of project if you believe it could uh, be an interest for the ONAP community. Uh, go on the wiki website. There is a section uh, where you can submit your project, and why not? You will be uh, joining us soon. That, that's the power of open source, yeah. right? So you have you can you can ask for something you know which you you'd like to see in the community. Go ahead. I, I, you you mentioned on the what's next uh, plan to have a working group for uh, integrating OpenStack into ONAP uh, with with ONAP as a self fund. Um, where do you plan to do that? OPNFV in OpenStack community itself, or you know how do we? How can I practice? Uh, we are looking both to OpenStack community as well as OPNFP. We are also talking to OPNFP team. We are part of OPNFP too. Uh, we, we are actually asking both the community to come together. Uh, so testing perspective, you know, like uh, I think OPNFP may be a right place to do the testing. Uh, but also have an, uh, you know, a sort of like exchanging the thought process between these two open source community. Uh, that's definitely need to happen between directly between one app and uh, uh, open snack community. But the testing could uh, definitely happen in the OPA and FE. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. My question was uh, about the actual resource management itself. Does uh, ONAP uh, plan to keep track of the actual hardware resources? Because the moment we talk about orchestration, uh, we get into this dilly-dally area, especially when it comes to VNFs, is there are specific hardware requirements. So how does ONAP uh, plan to address that? Does it 
plan to maintain some sort of a database such that during the design phase of, I think one of the things was about design, design the, the system itself, uh, that it can look into that database to see, okay, what hardware resources available and how do I place these, um, uh, you know. It's really handled in two layer. Uh, one layer is on the infrastructure layer. So let's say that we use OpenStack uh, for the orchestration. Uh, so OpenStack have to make a decision where to put the you know workload in, uh, but also there is a Uber orchestration layer in the one app that allows to decide across the multi data center also. Uh, in the OpenStack, uh, we have enhanced some of the code which we are working with the community to put that back in, uh, which ties into the the inventory system what you are talking about, and it can do more than currently what NOAA is doing today. And it can take a policy based, you can say that, you know, like this particular rack has some specialized hardware and we like to do it. And there is actually a talk that AT&T team is providing uh, about the profiles and how does that relate to a hardware. Uh, so there is a support that we have enhanced it. We are still working with the community to put that back into the OpenStack community. Okay. Thank you. Follow up on that, it would also take care of my migrations, I would think, based on. Yes, that's the intention. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Peter from Gardner. Actually, my question again is uh, how you position compared to the ESI Milo kind of architect, how you position the open source kind of uh, Not sure I followed the question. Uh, can you please repeat it? So, so you, you, you actually position uh, open stack as a beam or it's a position as a Milo? Uh, it, it's it's definitely it's a two different application coming together. Uh, there is no really a, any shim layer between OpenStack and OneApp. Uh, we like to use the API, uh, which are natively exposed out of the OpenStack uh, through the API or the heat template. Uh, so there is no shim layer. It's really using the API, whatever the community have derived, and the OneApp can talk through that APIs to interact to the uh, OpenStack. But if you have additional question after the talk, you know, we can discuss in detail. Yeah. And if, you. if you look at the controllers, they are based on open daylight. Um, so that's why we are, we are doing the, the connectivity uh, with the open stack as well. It could be the network controllers or it could be the application controller. They relied on this framework. Uh, and follow up question is what the status now between app and uh, the state? You do, uh, I mean, a lot of development on top of that, or it's just beginning operation. Is the question is like whether we have to do some enhancement in the yeah. OpenStack to use a one app? Uh, currently, we use as it is. You know, there is no specific enhancement. The demo what. Uh, uh, Catherine was showing, you know, like there is no special enhancement really needed. As I stated, it's all a API, whatever the native API. And, you know, if you're willing to use the heat template, you know, it can be used as it is. There is nothing enhancement needed. Uh, it's a two different platform coming together using the native API. So you don't need any special enhancement. But if there are any additional requirements from your cloud perspective or a tenant perspective, that's something you have to do it yourself with, uh, within this layer. Uh, but the one app and OpenStack itself doesn't need anything uh, you know, anything extra to interact today because that's already part of the, you know, solution. Yeah. We can have okay. some configuration change, some parameter change depending on the OpenStack flavor. Um, and, and that's why we're also looking at the community because we could not validate all the OpenStack version. Uh, if no, uh, we never know. Uh, we don't divide that some change had to be made. Of course, we will consider it. But so far, uh, we have no sit noticed it's more about configuration change, especially regarding the service orchestrator. We're triggering the controllers, and as I told you, the controllers uh, have the, um, are running based on the framework of open daylight. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.